The superhero genre currently dominates the cinematic landscape. Every few months or so, we get a new offering from either Marvel or DC, and occasionally, even smaller properties try to gain a foot on the ladder. Just this year, Valiant Comics started off their own cinematic universe with the Vin Diesel-led Bloodshot. However, this new norm only really came into effect over the last 10 years. Back in the 90s, general reactions to superhero movies were very, very different. World building wasn't exactly a thing yet, and lots more unknown properties were given the lead. We've decided to take a look back into the superhero movies of the 90s and pick out our 10 favorites. Coming in at number 10 is 1995's Tank Girl. Okay, like I mentioned, the 90s weren't a particularly great time for superheroes, and Tank Girl fails in many aspects. Narratively, it's kind of a mess, and stylistically, it's pretty alienating. It also lost nearly $20 million at the box office. However, Tank Girl does have a lot of redeeming factors. Mono and Hold On Me singer Courtney Love assembled the boppy soundtrack, and the film boasts a strong feminist theme. It also stars a very early Naomi Watts and Ice-T as Kangaroo Man. And if that's not enough for you to get you to check it out, I don't know what is. Number 9, 1994's The Shadow. Alec Baldwin plays the titular mind-controlling superhero in this adaptation written by David Coeb. Coeb also wrote the screenplay for Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, so he's no stranger to the genre. Although it was another commercial failure, The Shadow earned respect for its special effects, action, and style. Ian McKellen and Tim Curry provide some great support as well. Number 8, we have 1995's Crying Freeman. Crying Freeman was only technically release, released in the United States in 2018. Until it debuted on Amazon Prime, the only way Americans could see this film was to watch imported copies and tapes. John Wick villain Mark Damasco stars as Crying Freeman, an assassin most notable for the fact that he cries every time he kills someone. However, this is because he's being controlled by a sinister cult, and eventually his real emotions begin to overpower his programming. In our number 7 spot, we have Guyver, Dark Hero, released in 1994. It seems the best superhero films of the 90s never ended up in American theaters. The sequel to The Giver went straight to video, but ends up outdoing the original in various ways. What the sequel does best is respect the source material more. Following the original manga, the film adopts a darker and much more serious tone than its previous film. And because of this tone shift, it allows for better action and fight scenes. The gore and brutality only reflect the film's purpose even more. And it's just a shame Mark Hamill didn't see this one through. Number 6, The Rocketeer, released in 1991. Now before Captain America the First Avenger, director Joe Johnston took on a different kind of superhero. The film is set in the 1930s and follows a stunt pilot, Cliff Secord, who finds a rocket-powered jetpack. However, world-famous pilot Howard Hughes and the FBI are looking for the jetpack and set off after Cliff once he begins saving people whilst wearing the equipment. The Nazis get involved too, so don't worry, there's no lack of action. Billy Campbell leads the pack here, but Terry O'Quinn and Timothy Dalton are also typically great. The visual effects sequences too are of its time, but remain stunning even compared to the now digital world. Coming in at number 5, we have The Phantom, released in 1996. Billy Zane rocks the purple spandex in this tongue-in-cheek superhero flick, poking fun at the genre before it was cool. The Phantom remains hilariously self-aware and completely unapologetic. You're either on board with the jokes, or you're not. This plot follows the Phantom as he tries to defeat an evil genius obtaining ultimate power by collecting three magical skulls. And hey, if it's good enough for Catherine Zeta-Jones, it's good enough for me. In number four, we have 1994's The Crow. 
Brandon Lee's final film has become a cult staple in more ways than one. Lee was tragically injured on set by a round of defective blank ammunition and later died in the hospital. With eight days still left on the shoot, the film was finished by using a stunt double and special effects. Lee plays Eric Draven, a rock musician who comes back from the dead as a psychotic ghost in order to avenge his own death as well as the death of his fiance. It sounds as brutal as it actually is. In number three, we have 1990's Dick Tracy. Warren Beatty directs and stars in this action-packed crime thriller. And although Dick Tracy isn't technically a superhero, the film was adapted from the comic strip of the same name, as is the case with most superhero adaptations. Baby isn't the only star here. Al Pacino, Madonna, Kathy Bates, Dustin Hoffman, James Caan, and even Dick Van Dyke have parts to play. This film follows Dick Tracy as he is forced to handle skewed romantic interests while simultaneously trying to take down Big Boy Caprice's mob organization. Number two, we've got Batman Returns from 1992. Tim Burton returns to direct the sequel to his first Batman movie, expanding the world he created in his first movie. Batman Returns is a moodier sequel, taking liberties with the source material while somehow remaining a faithful adaptation. Danny DeVito's Penguin is set on destroying all the firstborn sons in Gotham City, and Michael Keaton's Batman takes him on while also attempting to deal with Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. With a great cast, solid action, and a stunning score, Batman Returns is a great follow-up and does the Caped Crusader proud. Last but not least, in our number one spot from 1998, we've got Blade. Blade shouldn't be ashamed to take the credit for paving the way for the MCU's success. It redefined the comic book genre and made superheroes cool for those that didn't originally like them. Wesley Snipes was a phenomenal choice to play the titular human-vampire hybrid. The opening club scene sets the bar high, but the film rarely falters. It's also arguably the first superhero film to begin setting up a larger connected universe outside of its own character. The two sequels are good additions, but don't quite capture the spark of the first one. But the Blade trilogy as a whole set the way for superheroes to take over cinema and finally show their worth to the world. Well, that's all for today, guys. Don't forget to share, like and share the video as always. I'm Alexandria, and thanks for watching.